Carolina Representative Nancy Mace is catching heat for a rather risque joke she cracked while speaking at a prayer breakfast in Washington, D.C. Let's watch. On this together, another year, another standing room only event. And when I woke up this morning at 7, I, I was getting picked up at 7.45. Patrick, my fiance, tried to pull me by my waist over this morning in bed. And I was like, no, baby, we don't got time for that this morning. Uh, I got to get to the prayer breakfast. And I got to be on time. And a little TMI. But um, I, he'll, he can wait. He's got, we got, I'll see him later tonight. Um, but I was here early on this together another year. Representative Mace responded to a tweet criticizing her comments, writing, My fiancé is not upset, but he did suggest I go to church twice this Sunday. See y'all at the 8.30 and the 11.30. So, yeah, I don't think people were uncomfortable about this uh, because she was a Christian. I think people were uncomfortable about this because it's weird. It's weird to talk it's about cringe. that. It's yeah. cringe. Nobody wants to hear about no. a, a congresswoman's sex life. Uh, but also... N read the room, right? I mean, you are at a prayer <laughs> breakfast. Um, this is technically a sin. Well, not technically. It is a sin mm -hmm. um, by the standards of, of the church to uh, to have sexual relations with your fiancé outside of marriage. Yeah. And so to just, like, flaunt that, the fact that you're sinning in front of your pastor and all of these people who are there that are Christians just seems, like, so ignorant and just kind of disrespectful to the people who take their faith really seriously. And I just, I don't understand what the heck she was thinking. And then to go and dismiss it as no big deal afterwards was just, like, another slap in the face for these people who are sitting there, like, I'm here to try to hear about how you are, you know, living out your mm -hmm. Christian principles, not to hear about you having sex with your fiance. Yeah, yeah. The way she was like, don't worry, he can wait. We're not worried about him. Right. <laughs> We're worried that you just forced us to imagine this scenario and, and push this upon us. And then later she's like, don't worry, everyone, my fiance is not mad. I'm just going to go to church twice. Again, we are not concerned about your fiance, Nancy Mace. She just must love him very much. Any excuse to talk about him. But I think there's something more going on with Nancy Mace because in the UFO UAP hearing, she was asking a line of questions and like had this piece of paper with like clearly the questions that were planned mm -hmm. out for her to ask. She asks one question. David Grush says, uh, you know, I can't speak on that. And then she's like, she starts reading the next question. And she goes, oh, well, actually, I can't ask about that one based on your last answer. Hang on one second. I guess we can't ask that. And it's like, why are you reading your script to everyone in the room and saying, well, I can't ask the next question in my script. Just move on. Just move on. She says a little bit too much information we don't need to hear. And so I think it might be a pattern for her, but it, it's kind of funny to watch. Yeah, she uh, does have a history of doing this kind of thing. And um, to be fair, I don't really know why she was necessarily invited to speak at this prayer breakfast in the first place, because I'm pretty sure that she's at least somewhat pro-abortion, mm -hmm. which is also something that's very offensive to the people in that room who are mostly yeah. evangelical Christians. So it's just like a weird choice for her to be chosen to speak. And she did say in a, in a follow-up tweet, here's the full speech from Wednesday's prayer breakfast. My speech was actually about a very vulnerable time in my life. And I shed a few tears telling the story about how the church changed my life. And I think that's great. Um, you know, I, I think it's important to hear testimony from people like that. But at the same time, like th what this joke revealed is that she is actively sinning and has no plans to stop. And she talks about how she, you know, goes to church because she's a sinner. And that's 100% true. Like we go to church because we're sinners, because we need the grace of God and of Jesus Christ. But there's also some uh, theological, like, like obvious theological uh, problems with saying that, yes, I'm a sinner, but I'm not sorry for my sin and I plan to keep doing it, that is problematic. Like that doesn't absolve you from the sin in the first place. Like going to church twice doesn't absolve you if you plan on having your fiance wake up and pull your waist over and have sex with you the morning before church. Like that's just not how it works. So I think there's mm -hmm. just like a disconnect of, of her not really understanding like why this was an issue for the people who were there. I did never understand that about Christianity. Uh, well, I guess it's more ca Catholic, right? You go to confession uh, in the Catholic religion, and you, you tell them your sins, and then you do some Hail Marys, and then you're absolved. Uh, I also understand that Jesus died for people's sins. 
Jesus didn't die for nothing. People are going to sin. Uh, I don't understand how any of that works. But to do this in front of people, to say, I'm doing the thing that you all think is terribly bad, that are, you know, Jesus, the very important guy in our religion, the, the Son of God, and all of that. He died for this. He's our Savior. He's our guy. And you're bragging to us that you're doing the thing that our whole religion is founded upon, right? Like, you're going to be a good person. You're going to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. You're not going to have sex before marriage. To say that at a prayer breakfast in front of a room of people, uh, even if you're not a lifelong Christian, I know not to do that. Yeah. Uh, and so why would you do it? Was it intentional for a viral moment? I think so because of the way she said it. The way she said uh, that, that line at the end, like, no, baby, we don't got time for that this morning. That is not her way of speaking. She doesn't talk like that. No. Uh, that was weird. That yeah. was performative. It was a, a joke. So to go out of your way to do something performative and make this joke at a place where it's terribly inappropriate and goes against everything these people believe, what an insane situation from Nancy. Yeah. And to your point about, you know, confession in the Catholic Church and then avoiding sin in, in other uh, Christian, uh, Christian denominations, there has to be, in order for you to be absolved, you have to... Mm -hmm. plan on not doing the sin again. Yeah. And you have to have, um, you know, the, the mental wherewithal to believe that what you did was bad. You have to be contrite. It's not just a matter of like saying the right thing or doing the right prayers and you're absolved. Mm -hmm. And so that's why this is such a problem is that she is basically boasting about the fact that she is going to continue to do the thing that she wants absolution for. And that's just like not how it works. I mean, and that would be mm -hmm. in any situation outside of religion, right? Where if you say you're sorry for something, but you don't really mean it and you plan on doing it again, are you really sorry? Like just on a, mm -hmm. a human, you know, personal to personal relationship too, right? Like if someone said, Hey, you really hurt me with this thing that you did. And you were like, Oh yeah, I'm sorry. But then you continued to do it and knew that you were going to continue to do it. Like your sorry didn't really mean anything. So that's why people are taking issue with this at this prayer breakfast. And I think you're right that this was probably planned. This was a planned joke. Mm -hmm. And outside of the sex thing, which is, a, as she said, TMI, like, hello, lady, you said it yourself. Nobody wants to hear about this. She also jokes about how she was going to be late to the breakfast and how she was like rushing to get ready on time because she had to wake up at 7 a.m., which is apparently super early for her. As a congresswoman, like that also rubs me the wrong way. You can't wake up like before 9 a.m. to go and do your job. You have to be rushing to get ready on time. Like you're not arriving 15 minutes early to things that are apparently very important to you. And you're about to give this emotional speech. It just doesn't make any sense to me. She seems sort of like haphazardly mm -hmm. thrown together. I mean, with your point about her reading those questions off of the UFO sheet during that hearing, like get your stuff together, Nancy. I mean, this is a serious position. I'm all for Congress people making jokes occasionally and trying to lighten up situations, mm -hmm. but it does seem like a recurring pattern that she's just this like disheveled person running from meeting to meeting and, and never really takes seriously what's going on. Right. And even not from the perspective of you're sinning, you're bragging about it. And I'm sure everyone who is Christian feels the same way you do about that. As just a person in a social setting, when you are speaking to a room of people, why are you talking about having yeah. sex in the morning? It is so irrelevant. It is so weird that she did it. That is what I can't get over, is the fact that you felt the need to tell a room of people that you almost got intimate this morning and that is why you were almost made late. How did she get elected to Congress if this is how she acts in public? I can't imagine what she said on the campaign trail while she was stumping. Also, uh, I was kind of just noticing that she's a bit older and she said fiance. She is also divorced. So she was yes. married from 2004 to 2019, uh, which is also something Christians don't feel particularly good about. But just right. weird. Very clumsy from Nancy. Very Naughty clumsy. Nancy. I, it's, I think about like a somewhat analogous situation, you know, in my personal life with people I'm close to, sometimes I curse. Yeah. If I were ever giving a speech in public or was on television, I wouldn't curse mm -hmm. because I'm trying to be respectful to the people that I am talking yeah. to. I'm trying to be respectful of the audience. And so this whole scenario to me just indicates a complete lack of respect for the people who were there. Yeah. It was kind of giving like, hello, fellow kids. And yeah. it was actually a room of like probably older Christian people. 60 year old have enough money to donate to Tim Scott. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Literally. Well, that does it for us this week on Rising. Robbie and Brianna will be back next week, Monday through Thursday. And Amber and I will see you guys right here next Friday. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who like to listen while on the go, 
We are now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. Bye, we'll see y'all. you next Friday. Yeah. Unless I get beamed up.